Hello friends, welcome back. Like this is the main way where uh, the about making the cron request will happen. Okay, and by going through the wp cron dot php file, uh, in this file you can simply uh, like see whether it's a post request. If it's not a post, um, then doing a jacks or doing cron, it will simply make a die. Okay, and then here if it's not, then it will simply define a cron. Uh, constant doing cron that's and and this will be used and after that if uh, it will load uh, it will include the wp load.php file which will load the wordpress required files plugins and themes and everything which um okay um and that's why this doing cron constant is very helpful so that we don't uh, end up into the infinite loop okay and then it will simply like this function get cron lock function will be used and uh, if object cache has been installed then it will use the object cache to set the uh, doing cron or cron lock else it will use a transient right we have learned about in the object cache video okay and then again it will get a ready cron jobs you uh, like wh what are the list of the uh, cron events which are due to run right and then simply checking uh, the doing cron transient if there is any lock execute uh, if there is any lock if not then it will simply uh, set the lock again and then it will uh, if the current lock and the calculated uh, cron lock if it's not same then it will be written because uh, we don't want to execute another cron event again right because for previous cron request is still in progress right so and if it's not then it will simply go through the forest loop array and uh, go through the every events key value pairs okay so let me go to, to here let me just disable uncomment this one so i can go through that uh, for loop okay so here into the wp cron.php list of the cron so this uh, this is the array okay and here the timestamp and the cron hooks so this is our timestamp and cron hooks will contain this array okay so this is our timestamp then in the cron hooks it will go to the for each loop because it's an array then it will say hook and then keys so this is the hook okay so, uh, the same hook mlb single event then uh, the recurring event here this one the recurring event and then it's checking the key uh, and have a value so this is the key and this key created by based on the arguments we have passed okay and and uh, we can have multiple multiple uh, callback function on the same based on the different arguments okay and then uh, it will get a schedule okay so here uh, here schedule is false okay so uh, if schedule is false then it won't be rescheduled again because it's a single event okay so if you go here with this example recurring event here we have the schedule 10 minute so um so we, uh wordpress will reschedule that event with the timestamp okay so in the reschedule event it will simply get the uh, timestamp so here we have passed old timestamp but current uh, and but timestamp is greater than now then it will update calculate the new timestamp else it will add the uh, get a current timestamp and then calculate few new timestamp which will be run like the when we reschedule the event it will be after the 10 minutes right so based on the based on that interval it will create a new time timestamp so that it will be run after the 10 minutes okay so uh it will reschedule the event then it will unschedule the current event based on the timestamp so uh, this timestamp event will be unscheduled uh okay and then it will do call or do action reference error. Okay, so before uh, before executing, uh, before calling this do action, uh, MLB recurring event or or the MLB single event, before uh, before executing the call uh, like action, uh, it, it will reschedule the event if, the, if it's a recurring event and um, unschedule the current event based on this timestamp. Okay, and then it's executing so that if there is an error occurred uh, in our callback function right so uh, but there is a different thing like if that callback function do like created error or throw the error but it's not a fault of the scheduled event right so before before executing that callback function or creating a do uh, calling the do action it will reschedule the event new event uh, if it's a recurring 
and it will be uh, 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 an unscheduled the current event and then it will execute the event again here okay so and that's why using this do action reference and the ar past arguments our uh, this callback function single event callback function or the recurring event callback function have been executed and whatever we want to perform that uh, task will be performed through that callback function register callback function okay and then it will it will simply check if the hook run too long and under the cron process told the lock then simply return it and if the cron um, set cron lock and the current cron lock is same then delete the transient and put a die statement okay so um yeah this way the wordpress cron execution process um, um like looks like and how the wordpress execute the events and if uh, it's a recurring event then how it's rescheduled and unschedule the current event based on the timestamp and etc okay and some of the a few other actions and filters we came to know how alternate wp clone we came to know and learn about it and why we don't not using it and yeah and so and now after this you have much more idea about wordpress clone api what are the functions are there how we can register schedule the event single event or recurring event or the um, adding the custom intervals using the WPCLI and the plugins available to manage the cron, uh, cron into WordPress admin or, or through the CLI base practices we have seen um, advantages and disadvantages of the WordPress cron we can set the we can execute the WordPress cron uh, by the setting the disable WP cron function uh, constant set to true and use the system task schedule or the cron tab to execute the WordPress cron so um yeah so that's all about the wordpress cron and i hope you have now you have much more better understanding uh but still i would recommend it to go through this handbook okay um this handbook uh from the, the from the plugin handbook go through the cron uh, uh chapter and their subtopics and also uh go through the code base wordpress functions and everything to understand better see how the this log cron lock and few other logic execution and everything right so but it will give you a better idea and now you will have a better understanding as well and you will be figured it out why the some of the cron events not working and having a problems it will help you in the debugging as well it will help you to achieve some use cases where it needs to be run in the background and everything right and so biggest point about wordpress cron in my opinion is that uh, we don't have to rely uh, we have to rely on the cron tab or the system task scheduler but we don't have to create any standalone php files to perform something right generally we do that because we uh, we ask cron tab or the uh, system task scheduler to execute a php file okay on some uh, regular interval and perform perform particular thing like perform the task but in the wordpress cron we can keep using the wordpress cron wordpress functions everything which is in the WordPress itself, and we don't have to create any separate PHP files uh, separately and attaching manually to the cron tab or the system task schedule or anything. We have to, we can keep using the WordPress cron. If the uh, WordPress cron is not disabled and the, we are and the user is not using the cron tab or the system task scheduler, still WordPress cron will be executed on the page right by making the post API request. So. Uh, as a team or plugin developer we can uh, implement a cron cron related uh, functionality or the use cases and user don't have to worry about that and we have better like we don't have like as a developer we don't have to ask develop the user okay this is the php file uh, add it to your server ask um, set the cron tab and everything to execute we don't have to do that in the wordpress wordpress provide this api and we can use that um yeah so that's all about cron uh, okay so you can go through it after watching this video and see what are the use cases where you can use the wordpress cron okay so yeah um, thanks for watching see you on the next one joy wordpress bye bye